Hey guys, Beast coming at you. Sorry for the uh, sunglasses. It is extremely bright. Got some uh, late winter happening here in Central Oregon. So, big things. I'm back. I'm going to catch up on videos, new videos, lots of new products coming out. Um, as well as the biggest one is KLR Build. Where's that been, right? Because I've been out of the country pretty much for the last year. As well as my shop's been used by um, family and I haven't been able to utilize that space as I wanted. So, that's been taken care of. I'm back. KLR build is going to get finished because it's going to be springtime soon and I'm going to want to get out on two wheels. The biggest, uh, I guess, newest addition to the family, you might be able to hear, is uh, a big old bus back there. Not uh, gigantic, but uh, let's roll it around here. You're looking at the new Adventure Mobile. I've been wanting a, uh, a diesel and a, and a van for a very long time. Uh, a van with a high top was pretty much going to be essential even if I didn't find a lot of the diesel work vans with a high top in there I was going to be putting an 18 to 24 inch high top in it instead what I found was this guy it's a uh, essentially a little transit public transportation van used by a casino down south in Oregon here it does have high mileage previous owner put some higher 235 85s on there Testing them out here in the snow and the mud. I'm just kind of curious to see how the chassis performs. Suspension performs now. We're not doing anything serious with this thing. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a full van build. We're going to do it a little bit more on the um, expedition overlanding style. You know, we're not going to have a lot of weight up top. We're going to do things with a lot of redundancies and a lot of ability to uh, stay out in the middle of nowhere for a very long time being self-sufficient. So if you want, let's take a look. She's an O1. E350, however, she's bigger than a 350 according to the uh, license just to hold more passengers in the back. It is a 24 inch above cab section, so me at 6'4", I can actually stand up in the center of this guy. And as well, I'll throw in some photos here, it's about 20 feet. It's about as long as your extended Econoline van would be anyway. The best part is now I have big straight walls and a nice high ceiling um, to create a nice welcome space and uh, have a lot of room to work with on the inside. Um, kind of the short term plans, more than likely the back's been raked a little bit. We're going to level the front with some taller springs. We are going to leave it in two wheel drive at the moment until I know that this motor and drivetrain is solid and then we'll add a transfer case, a front axle and this will become four wheel drive. Um, I've added a little bit of grill and lights in there because the uh, early ones were uh, ridiculous. I will take the little whirly gig light off the top. I am going to delete the dualies and as well as probably add a guard to the condenser but pretty standard van front. We'll uh, take you around the side. Alright coming to the side one of the things I was looking for that this does not have is I wanted a standard van front. Um, the way some of the back transit buses were built I didn't really like the extra back end. I didn't need a wheelchair lift. This does have sort of the school bus swing doors. I am going to be framing that in and putting in a standard RV door and getting rid of that as well as deleting some of that lip on the bottom to get a little bit more ground clearance on her. But uh, let's take a look inside. Alright guys, forgive the mess. It is a work in progress and I've essentially get the mud off my boots because I've just gutted the whole thing. So it is a complete blank slate at the moment. Um, I still have to rip up the floors. I did get the uh, wiring working for the rear heater, which we'll look at it for in the moment. Ten bucks on uh, Craigslist. Found a bench seat that I've got bolted down so I have the addition of a few more passengers. Simply because standard bucket seat over here. And the, the other reason to delete this big mess of the school bus doors is I want to build in a passenger seat so I can have a passenger in there. There is some uh, framework for the support of the cab here, but uh, we're going to delete that, bring that back a little bit, have the uh, RV door back here, and that'll give me a lot of floor space. This goes kind of the idea we've got. Again, I ripped off everything, so I'm chasing wires right now, adding insulation, um, checking out the solenoid, which doesn't seem to fire, so I've got it shortcutted at the moment, so all the stuff in the rear works. Really nice sort of power setup. I've already got lots of built-in fuse blocks. Um, actual direct fuses as well as uh, standard inline fuses. It's a nice setup. It's going to allow me to add things very easily to it uh, with an, a system that's already built in. However, it's very hard to find schematics on this. So there's been a bit of chasing wires. I did look at buying a uh, ambulance. 
However, I wouldn't be able to stand up in an ambulance, so I've removed these panels here. We're chasing Wari back to the rear. Um, there's no uh, bug nets at the moment on the windows, so right now what I'm thinking about is deleting this middle window and plating it up. And uh, what we're going to do is have kind of a uh, storage closet so that we can even out where this door comes across. From that point back, you'll have a small fireplace, a little nook, uh, you'll have kind of a closet drawer system. The back is either going to be a U-shaped bench that will turn into a queen size bed with a table on it, or it'll at least be just two benches. It'll be built out a little bit. We're going to add an access panel to that back. As you can see, there's no door on the back of the bus. So we're going to add an access panel, and that'll be essentially the garage for oils, tools, high lift jacks. Everything will be tucked in to a built-in garage that'll be part of underneath the bed access there. Uh, so far I am keeping this air conditioning unit. I did get it functioning. Um, I haven't tested it in summertime. So again, that's what you saw just behind the driver door is the condensing unit. So I don't have anything above me. This is flat. So I don't have a gigantic air conditioning piece like an RV would have. It's actually built in here. So we'll see whether I like it or not when that becomes a bed, if it runs interference with anything. And then of course coming this way, more storage and dry area. Um, maybe short coverage or at least a wall. We're going to delete this other middle window. And then this side over here is going to be the sink, counter space, fridge, stove on this side. And what that allows me to do is run in the sink hose, possibly outside or just into this door well. If I create a temporary shower, you'll get hot water from the sink into the shower area for those times that you need a shower, but I don't plan on doing a lot of showering um, in the van. I'm not going to create a surround in here. so. Lots of really cool things happening guys. Welcome to uh, the new version. We're back off of two wheels for a little bit. Once we get the KLR build done, we'll have a few trips on motorcycles. But uh, a big part of the spring is going to be getting Van Life Expedition uh, Adventure Bus, whatever we're gonna call this thing, up in action. So I'm gonna get going before the sun goes down and uh, see if we can't get this big beast out of the mud and snow. We'll catch you guys down the road. Let me know what you think. Any comments, suggestions, anybody who's doing a similar build, go ahead and send me a link to their channel. Um, there's a lot of van life guys out there, and again, I'm going to be doing it a lot more towards the overland style. And what I mean by that is form over function. You're not going to see 500 pounds with a pallet wood in here so that my Instagram uh, you know, level goes up. You know, you're going to see very form functioning. We're not going to put a lot of cupboards up on top here because I don't want to have a lot of added weight. As well as being 6'4", why would I add a lot of cupboard space so I can bang my head in to the fact that I can actually stand up in this thing. It's absolutely phenomenal. So we're going to start with bed, flooring, insulation. That will be coming soon, possibly deleting the windows, lifting the vehicle, and going from there. So stay tuned, guys. I'm excited. Hope you are too. See you down the road. Thanks for all the love and support. You guys are amazing. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the adventure on social media, and we'll see you on the road.